Welcome to the Monday, June the 6th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smith, Pritchett, member. Okay, we have five in attendance. I will let Meredith review remote meeting procedures at this point. All right, so uh, I am going to be sharing my screen. Uh, the shared screen is mostly for anybody who is attending or not attending, watching the Orca Media, um, but the directions are gonna be helpful for anybody who's attending remotely. Joe, this should be very familiar to you. Uh, all righty. So um, for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform, either through the video or telephone access options. So you can use this link here um, and paste that into your web browser and it should log you right into the meeting. Or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and this meeting ID. If anyone's having problems logging in, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-bt.org. I will be keeping my email up through the meeting so that I can assist you in trying to log in. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. Um, and please refrain from using the chat function except for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, tonight, so far, all we have on our applicants, so I'm not going to go through most of the rest of this. Um, yeah, I think everything else is pretty good. Um, in the event the public is unable to access the meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain, um, because we did list accessing remotely as a general way to participate in the meeting. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless anyone has anything to add at this time, do I hear a motion to approve our agenda? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Steve. Ben. The agenda is approved. We can move to the first application for 137 Elm Street, owner applicant, Follinsby Properties. Is someone here from Follinsby? Yes, That's me, Pete McAllister. Oh, hold on one second, Peter. I'm gonna turn up the um, speakers on this end. For some reason, it come, came out pretty quiet. Okay. Oh, that's better. Whatever you just did, do that. Uh, okay, I'll do whatever I just did, which was, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead and describe your project for us. Okay, so uh, we recently purchased the building 137 Elm, uh, which consists of two commercial um, units and one residential unit, the residential unit being the third floor apartment. Uh, we had, before we purchased it, we had Chris Lumber come over um, to do an inspection because we wanted to see what the building needed for code. Um, and one of the things he mentioned is that the um, one of the bedrooms, it's a two bedroom apartment, and one of the bedrooms did not have an egress um, route for um, tenants. So, which was, um, you know, important because even I think the, the, even if it was a marketed as a one bedroom, I, we can't control people staying in there. So we wanted to make sure that we, you know, make sure it's safe. And Chris was, you know, concerned about that too. So we looked at the building and the only way to get a egress window in there is to use a casement size window because it's, there's literally no room in between the second floor roof line and the third and the, and the, and the building roof line to get any, um, window taller than what we have maxed out on here is, is the 27 and a half. So we're going wider. So 27 and a half by 47 and a half will give us a casement and an egress um, code size window. Um, that also will give us the opportunity. We, I 
we met with the mason and he'll be able to reinstall a new jack arch above this new window um so it'll match the other arches over the existing windows so this again is on the third floor rear of the building it's it's quite hard, actually kind of hard to see um but this is the only option that we after talking to chris we came over multiple times and talking with every window maker in the country this is the only window that we can find that will fit and meet code so um, if you have any questions Peter, i'm not familiar with the term jack arch what's that so that's just the a brick arch that goes over windows you'll see i, I don't know if you can see it actually in the picture that i sent it's kind of you know, just kind of a small picture, but over every window in the building, there's a brick arch. It's kind of it's, it's how they did the um, support. They didn't use a a um, I'm not a builder by trade. I forget the you know they did not use a a, a sill or a roof you know support over the masonry. They built these arches, which are just basically you know gravity supported structures. And when you do masonry. So it's kind of decorative. It kind of, you know, looks like if, you know, for, uh, you know, layman terms, it looks like a fan, a brick fan over every window kind of thing. And it is made of the same bricks? Yes. Okay, thank you. Depending on the interior of that space and the framing spacing, which is frequently 16 inches, uh, two spaces are 32, had there been any thought of leaving the existing window that's there and mounting that egress window the in the other direction vertically uh, back towards the center of that space? There's where that window is. It's it's about if you look at the where it's circled, it's only about um, I would say twenty four inches from the wall. Um, the, the, the room does not go to the center line of the building. It actually goes over um, slightly over about, about two feet from that window. So there's not enough height. We did think of that to, to get in a vertical sized window. It, it, there's, we tried every combination of what would fit and to where we, you know, um, because again, that the window now it will be, you know, it'll be at the flashing line for the second floor roof. Is this varying wall brick or is it uh, a facade? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Um, he has if it's bearing wall brick or facade brick. Uh, it's bearing wall brick. Is there enough space? to uh, obviously it's a fairly short space that you would have to probably lay down and crawl through that window to get out well it's the, the code says it has to be 24 inches so we're going 27 inches tall so it'll be 27 inches tall and it'll be 47 inches wide so it was actually much wider than it needs to be but we figured because of the space we wanted to go as that, that is as big as we can go wide is that 47 inches to make it is, um, I don't know if it's a word, egressible as possible. Um, but that's the yeah. that's the max height we can get there. But it is so the, more than code. Does the, the bedroom doesn't occupy that whole space on the gable end? No, no, it, you mean so on the gable end. So if you look at the center pitch line of the, of the roof, um, the, in the center of the third floor is the staircase going up the rear stair. So it's not, it doesn't oh, okay. go to the center pitch line. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't know what was inside or what your other options might be. Where are they going to go when they get out the window? That that's the second floor roof line. There is a second floor roof. So that's, Chris that's thought that was more than time. adequate. If there was, I couldn't hear. Is there any way down from the second floor roof, or is that just a place you can stay until the uh, the firemen get a ladder up? That's yeah. That's that would be yeah. There's until there's a um, 
there would be another way to get down. Yeah. But from what I understood talking to Chris for code, that was acceptable. Liz, I think you're on mute. I think your microphone like adjusts once you get started. So what did you just say? Well, Liz, I it looked like Liz was talking, but she's on mute. Yep, you're still on mute, Liz. Oh, you're still on mute. There you go. Is that okay? Okay. Um, I was just wondering if that is just one big pane of glass or <clears throat> thinking it would look a little better, you know, more typical of, um, I don't know, th that stage of building if you had at least one vertical pane or muntin in the middle. Um, so it would look... A little more in scale, I guess, the, the panes of glass than just one large pane. Yeah, we, we I looked at the grills and it looked honestly, it looked kind of odd. So I didn't order the grill. I mean, we can always order a grill to put on there if it would look better. But the the problem with putting the grill on it really because of its um, shape, it bisected it um, horizontally uh -huh. to make it. It made it look kind of odd. Uh huh. <laughs> well, it is the back of the building, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, I took this picture in the winter. You usually actually can't even see it. It's, it's kind of hard to see that spot. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just curious if you looked at other options. Or you yeah, I looked. At, I, you know, if you might know the the trouble of getting any window order. I this is coming yeah. from a company, a, a mill in Iowa. Is the only uh -huh. place I could find that I would even make one this size because it's extremely custom. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments or suggestions from anyone on the committee? Not me. No. Okay. I'm assuming silence is consent. <laughs> So I'll go through the criteria for the project. On the design review criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, number 1A, there is no, re well, the removal of ex historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. In this particular case, there is a safety need for the egress window. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize historic buildings shall be preserved. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, shall not be approved. In this particular case, this window is acceptable for the egress purpose. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with amassing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Attention to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the, of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable in this location because of the whatever limitations there are. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors. Again, acceptable. Rhythm. Visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of historic buildings shall be shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible. Again, in this particular location, this window is acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration of a building. 
acceptable? And windows and doors on historic structures. Character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and moldings shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be re rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style materials and architectural features. Again, due to limitations and the location at the back of the building, this window is acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Martha, I'm a yes. Eric, yes. Ben, yes. Liz, Liz yes. And Steve, yes. So the application is approved. So Peter, because there weren't any recommended changes, um, we will get this out to you as soon as possible. Should we mail it? Um, we have it set to be mailed to you, or do you want me to have um, our zoning assistant email you when it's ready so you can come pick it up? Uh, just, you just mail it to me. That'll be fine, thank you. Okay, great, we will do. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much and good luck with your project. Thank you. We can move forward to the next application for 62 Barry Street, Washington County Mental Health, the removal of a circular metal fire escape and replacement of a door with a window or a wall. Don't forget to speak as close as you can into the microphone. Okay, I think you have the pictures, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You just said everything I would say. There's an old metal fire escape, a circular stairway type thing. We don't need it as an egress anymore. The architect has said we're changing the fire suppression system and we're closing off a third floor and he said it's redundant. Okay. Is there a particular window proposed for the opening? We're going to try to match what's there. I believe there's a, um, in your packet, there's something from Jason Young at Connor that, that speaks to the window and the siding. Oh yeah, let me pull it up on the screen because it's very small print when it's printed out on eight and a half by 11. In the meantime, can you remind me which, which one is 62 Berry Street? Is that the one on the it, corner of? No, that's, of that's 90, that's Nelson. Okay. 62 is the one that's next to the senior center. Okay, thank that you. It abuts the parking lot. Right. So that would just be, it would, ma would match the opening of the door, just a, a nine pane. I thought that Jason, I- yeah, Hold on, Let me, I'm pulling it up window. on the screen, sorry. It's, it's not, we don't have it in our- oh, It's on, if you go back to the, the elevation drawing, and I'm pulling it up on the screen. Um, remove vinyl siding as needed and replace with new vinyl siding colored to match. And it's going to be a double hung window of similar size to the existing double hung windows um, okay. to you know frame in the opening and then finish similar to adjacent windows. So it, the way this is planned, you wouldn't actually be able to tell there had been a door there previously is what it looks like. Okay. So the, um, the I can pull it up if I need to. The um, listing of this property in the historic register does not mention this door or the spiral fire okay. escape at all. Okay. Quick question. You said suppression. Is the building sprinklered? Uh, it's sprinklered, but we they're putting in some new system that's better than what was in it. Oh, okay. 
very expensive new system that's better than the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just curious that it wasn't, you know, pertinent to the the application. I was just curious what, what had changed inside. <laughs> Any other? I think it's an improvement. <laughs> yes, it seems to be. Any other questions, comments, or suggestions? I assume you're, are you also well up there painting a the trim in the soffit color and everything that's taking off? No, that'll be, we're, we've applied to the lead abatement program to do that. Yep. We're on their list. I don't think they'll get to us this year. Okay, as far as the the painting is and part of the, the application, which is it, it's not needed at this point anyway. So we'll review the project for the removal of the door and a replacement with a window of like kind and quality and appearance as the rest of the windows. So exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings should be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features should be repaired rather than replaced. And where the severity of deterioration requires, requires replacement, of a character defining feature, new features shall be replaced in kind, acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. New development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes. That's acceptable. Respect views of the State House Dome, acceptable where applicable, acceptable, certainly. Are any of these blacked out or are they all? Yeah, well, I mean, this is about heights of windows and doors, and it's the opening is too Yeah, okay. Right? Uh, this says for parcels with both river and street and they frontage. Have <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's not applicable yeah. here. Height, I, not applicable here. I clearly got distracted no, that's okay. way through that one. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of sides, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm. Visual patterns established by the alteration of solid walls and openings. The facade of a building should create a rhythm acceptable. Uh, roof shape and equipment, that would not be applicable here. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building, shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement, size, proportion, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. And when it's not possible, character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. That's acceptable. Porches and stairs on historic structures, location of porches, ramp stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing. Again, in this particular case, it's being removed. And that is acceptable at this location. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Liz. And Steve says yes. So. Voted, the vote is five in to nothing in favor. And if you're mark, in the market for a circular metal staircase, <laughs> watch front porch for them. <laughs> I was thinking that we could go to the other person that we were just speaking about coming oh. down from Oh, there center. you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we could get you to sign this since you're here. Yeah. Um, and then we'll get this out. Oh. 
not need administrative site plans. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good luck with your project. <laughs> Perfect timing, Liz. <laughs> You're welcome. Our next application is for 9J Street. Our applicant is Liz Sweeney. I forgot to say that. Um, so if you want to come up to the round table and sit at the, speak into the microphone. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, describe your application for us. Well, I'm, I've been having some um, water uh, leakage on my front porch area, and I've had many people come over. And I guess the only way to resolve this is because there's rot now above the windowsill, above the porch roof. So Mark Kahneman said the only way to probably resolve this is to take the siding off the front of the house and just kind of redo that whole thing. So it's been going on for 10 years. So that's where I'm at. I don't want to do it, but. I, I have to say that I, I'm not a big fan of vinyl siding. Have you considered well, I have, aluminum, I have aluminum siding on there right now and you can't get aluminum siding to replace it. So the only way that we can replace it is with the vinyl. Or clapboarding? Well, that would be a lot because I probably have lead paint underneath that. So, and then that would look really awkward with the rest of the house still being siding, aluminum siding. And he's getting the same width. What's, do you know what's underneath the aluminum siding? Is a gray clapboard. But okay. I bought that house 33 years ago. Uh huh. And the people that owned it before, it was already sided with mm -hmm. aluminum siding. So I don't know what they were even covering up way back then. So I'm assuming it's all clapboard. I've never been able to find a picture of what it was. So I know that my brother took an old house and removed all the aluminum siding that was there and found clapboard underneath yeah. the entire house. Well, that would be such a big project from what Mark said, because then you're dealing with lead paint. So he just suggested that in order to fi fix this problem, which I've um, had, is to take the siding off and repair the rot wood under around the window sills on above the big window and the window above the porch, and then figure out where the problem is because it leaks straight down from the siding down the front porch and then down the um, down the wall of the front porch and then down the porch. So it's created a big rotting rotting spot on my porch you now. And I've had it patched and tried to figure this out. So so you're not sure where the water is getting in? Is that you know why, why there is a leak? Can you say that one more time? Um, yes. Is there? <clears throat> have you? Maybe you mentioned this and I didn't hear it. Um, have, has the leak, the location of where the water is entering and causing the damage, that's been located? No. And he's been over so many times and has patched like so many areas all over the porch and under the windowsill. So, oh. And he, he cannot figure it out. And he's, he's worked on, on my house before. I'm sorry. Oh my God, I forgot I have something in the oven. Okay. <laughs> well, my guess is that it's pretty inadequate flashing up underneath the 
that she's going to underneath the siding that supports the way it is. Yeah, right now. Yeah, that's good. It, it could be because the person that I had come over to. Oh, sorry, you're going to have to speak near the um, microphone so that sorry. they can hear you remotely. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's hard because you want to look at the people you're so, talking to. The person 10 years ago or so who I had come over and do some roof repair, everyone had told me he put the flashing on wrong. And within the first rainstorm, I had water coming down the side of my wall and down the porch. And I kept, I had him come over at least 10 times and he said there was nothing wrong because it wasn't raining at that time. And, <laughs> and there wasn't rot at that time. And then I still contacted him two years ago and he just never replied or got back to me. So, so anyways, yeah, it, it, it very co could just be that, but now I think I'm dealing with rot underneath all my siding because it's been 10 years and um, I've, I've addressed this with many people, Mark, especially he's been so kind coming over and trying to figure it out. And now it's going clear across the top of my seat, my porch um, ceiling. I, I would just think yeah. that sliding off above the porch was kind of stained there. And see what you find and see if you can just flash up to that. Uh... Well, he said that in order, because the siding, this aluminum siding, he said, you take one piece off, it rolls up like a tin can. This is what he told me. So you can't just take one piece off to fix the problem. It has to be the whole front of the house. That's what he told me. I don't know if that's accurate or not. That is what he told me. I really don't wanna spend $8,500 to do this, but I don't know what else to do. Because I think if it was a quick fix, I would, I would, someone would have done that for me. Because I've tried to address this for ten years, and from what Mark said is that siding just and it won't go back up. <clears throat> you take one piece off, and it won't go back up. So then, and you said you can't, you can't right now get aluminum siding. Anywhere. That's what Mark said. I haven't looked into it, but he said that he he can get. The vinyl siding the same width to make it look good but the only thing when he went to Allen Lumber when we talked I think it was two years ago they maybe it was last year I can't remember they had just the plain one and then when he went to get the cut sheet it, it's more of a wood type of looking uh, siding does the existing siding have that embossing on it? Does, does it have that? It's just a plain, the existing siding is just a plain smooth face or does it have any texture? It's plain smooth. Plain smooth face. But it's the front of the house. And I mean, I could see what Mark can do if he can search around for stuff. The, the, the embossed siding has a couple of problems. First, it's just an absolutely fake appearance. And it also gathers a lot of dirt. Vinyl siding has this problem anyway. Paint sloughs off dirt, but uh, vinyl siding will gather dirt. And if you've got all those little nooks and crannies for it to gather in, it will do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to see what he can do to find just the smooth siding. But from, I think I, I would, I would just. You know, just try taking sawing and cutting off the the pieces that are stained above the porch to see what you find underneath there. And you could just replace that with flashing above the porch rather than take the whole front of the house apart. I mean, I don't see, I'm not, I don't even know what to say to that because I would love to do that, but he, um, I really trust this guy. Um, 
What's his yeah. name? His name is Mark Kahneman. He's been a builder for many years. Yeah. Do you know him? I do. Yeah. And it's not like I don't think, and 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 we're friends because we lived right next to, almost around the corner from each other. Our kids grew up with each other, and I really don't think he would tell me that I would need to have the whole front of the house, all that taken down unless it needed to be done. But if you guys feel that that's just. Well, maybe he's concerned there's some mold under there. And so he wants to check it out. Well, I know there's rot, um, especially under the windowsill. And there's probably rot behind all the water that's been coming down and created a rotting, mm -hmm. rotting spot on the floor of my porch. So. Yeah. Sadly, I think you are going to have to peel away all that to begin with, to get a sense of what, what is going on that day. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with Mark that like, once that stuff comes off, it's not going back on. That's what he told me. And it's a, uh, hey, yeah. And you can't kind of like patch, you can't like weave in a little bit here or there. It's, it's a. I, yeah, think that I understand that. I don't, uh, uh, you know, if the whole thing has to be done, it has to be done. But it just seems like a, a lot of work to get at a very localized problem. I think starting with your plan. <laughs> it yes. doesn't. Uh, I, I think you do need to look for some smooth faced siding because it's not. It's, otherwise, it's not going to match the rest. Um, you know, I, I kind of told Mark that, I mean, he, he, was, he felt bad about it. There's a note on the back of my paper that he had written. Um, oh, it, does, it didn't scan and print very well. I so there's a little note can't. he wrote to me saying that this is all that they had. But I'm sure he's got resources and can try to find or, you know, home, I could order it or something. And is he also going to repair or redo the flashing? If it's done incorrectly, I mean, that's maybe what's causing the problem to begin with. So I think if it is incorrectly done, I think, first of all, that would, you know, that's really important to fix. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming he's just going to. He would. He's done it. He's done enough projects that he would certainly flash anything that he, he replaced. Yeah, he'll fix it. I think that when he finds, like, I have a feeling I'm going to be paying a lot more than I than that price is because he's probably going to find a lot of stuff. Well, you'll just have to strip it and replace whatever's bad and flash it properly when it goes back together. And I'm, I'm sure he will do that. And maybe mm -hmm. he didn't put it in his. And then I, in, I assume that you will, if you, whatever siding you put back, I'm assuming you would paint to match the rest of the house. Otherwise you have to paint the rest of the house to match the siding. Well, we're take, we're going with white still. And he's going to put, um, he had said he's going to put siding around the sill, the window frames instead of, because right now I, they're all painted. So I think that's what he mentioned in there. Can you read Mark's note? Uh, yeah, so Mark's, so for some reason it didn't come, it, it didn't end up in the printed packet. So there is a note after the um, cut sheet for the siding that says, Liz, this is the best RK Miles could do. Unfortunately, this product would have a wood grain, not what they told me they could get. By now, he might be able to get something that's this smooth as a possibility or just go to different suppliers. Um, Right. Is I'm hoping so. Right. Because of course I want it to match, but um, um 
And I'm sorry. It's so if you're just going to replace the front, I would certainly recommend finding, and you should be able to find a, a siding that has a surface that matches the rest of the siding on the mm -hmm. house. So it, again, so that it would match. Otherwise, it's going to have a different appearance that's not going to be mm -hmm. compatible. Right, right. I mean, your comment about around the windows, and maybe you guys can understand what this means. Well, what? It said install new, the white eight inch vinyl siding and channel around windows. So I don't know if that would change how it looks the now. Chan the channel around the windows is for siding just butts up against the existing casings around the window. Oh, if okay. the casings around the window are rotten, then you would pull that all off and right. replace that with either wood or a material that has the same appearance uh, that right. would need to be flashed and then they'll put the channel around that and then the siding goes into the channel. So that that's pretty standard okay. material. And he, he would certainly do that. And then again, all that flashing and again, the flashing on the porch roof would come off the roof and go up underneath the siding so that mm -hmm. it, it, it channels the water away from any place that would tend to leak right and it sounds like there's a collection of problems that are that are there and again once you remove that siding you have to remove the siding to figure out what's going on and make mm -hmm. repairs underneath and then again you can't you would never be able to pull off all that siding and replace it so you would have to re i mean replace it with the same material you'd have to put something new up there right yeah so any any splashing as it's coming off the main roof and hitting that porch roof, it's splashing up onto that. You can almost see it, Mark. Yeah. Right. You can see the water stains now on the house more. So it's probably going to be some rot he's going to have to fix, I'm assuming, but I don't know. I would think so. You never know until you pull off the siding that's there and find out what's underneath. Right. Right. Exactly. And there's no way to, there's no good way mm -hmm. to fix it without doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, you're just covering up what's, what may be bad. Right. And it's, I've been dealing with this for 10 years. Yes. So it's not like I haven't addressed it and just been like, oh, well, um, but now it's it's such an issue and mark is has been i pretty much had to beg him to come over <laughs> and um so anyways the other thing is i could just sell the place <laughs> and <laughs> move <laughs> and let it be someone else's problem but well, unfortunately, the inspection report would show show that and reduce your potential right. sale price right, exactly. by either that or the buyer would want you to fix it before they bought it, right. one right. or the other, exactly. or it would reduce the sale price of the house. So yeah. you're in, in one way, you're protect, protecting your investment yeah. by yeah. fixing it. Exactly. And then if you're happy with it, you can stay there. <laughs> well, also, yeah. once you've got all that wood exposed, you can do some little home tests, see if there really is lead paint. And if there isn't, other options might open up right. later on down the line. Well, it's I'm pretty miracle. positive it's lead paint from what my next door neighbor, Les Mirano, has told me. Mm. Yeah, because some siding had fallen off the back near the porch and he could see the gray wood and we put up some leftover siding from someone else's house to go up there and but you can't even see it it's yellow yeah but at least it's there um but he, you know he's an expert and he was looking at it, it was like eh, oh yeah bad. he's already told me <laughs> oh. yeah but who knows what what will happen Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? 
other than a recommendation that the replacement siding have the same surface finish to match the remainder of the signing aluminum siding on the on the dwelling. And again, you should it should it should be available. You might have to look a little harder for it, but it should be available. Right. Okay, I'll let him know that. Any other suggestions? And again, the when again you you'll know a lot more when you take what's there off and find out where the problem areas are. And then you'll have a better idea of okay. how to deal with, with those leaks and prevent that. Right. So we'll go through the criteria for this one. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings should be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a historic buildings shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature. The new feature shall be replaced in kind. And in this case, you're replacing siding with trying to do something with the existing aluminum on the rest of the building. Acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of the building, acceptable. And again, the recommendation is that the replacement, any replacement siding have the same surface finish to match the remaining aluminum siding on the dwelling. And with that recommendation, all in favor, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. I'm a reluctant yes. I hope that something can be done once you get in there and see what is done. Okay. And Liz? Sorry, yes, Liz. Okay. So it's approved. Five. <laughs> Nothing in favor. So, Liz, so the making the siding on the front match with the finish, right? The flat, the others is going to end up being a permit condition to be issued a permit. Um, so, if you're comfortable signing off on that, you can sign the form on this now. Um, if you want to confer with Mark and make sure that you can actually get that um, by checking various suppliers, you can wait to sign off on this because um, you do have the option of appealing that if you don't think, if you really don't think you can get that flat finish. I just want to make sure you're aware of all your options here. Right. Um, you know. Right. Um... If you want to think and talk to Mark tomorrow, you can. I can put a note on here. I won't be in the office, but Audra will be. Um, and so you can decide, you know, confer with Mark and then sign this once you know you can agree to that recommendation. Right. Um, so if he can't, like, even if he looks around and can't find it, what will happen? Uh, if he can't find that and you can't meet this, then what you can do is say you want to appeal to the development review board and okay. get on the next agenda that we can for that meeting. There'd be probably the next meeting that would be July like 18th before you could get for the development review board. Oh. I would check with some of the larger yeah. suppliers. Yeah, talk, I mean, talk to Mark and check for your suppliers. I mean, sometimes the local lumber yards don't have access or priority access to some materials that may be available to your customers so do you suggest i sign this 
I mean, I don't know what to I don't, do I don't want to go either way. If you sign this and then I'm, we're pretty much going to issue the permit within the next two days. But if you then can't get that flat siding and you put the textured stuff up on the front of the building, it's a violation of the zoning permit. Right. Which you don't really want to go through that hassle. No. So well, I, would, what, what, I would touch base with Mark and, and do a hunt for that flat. Check with, yeah, check with Mark, hunt for the flat face, smooth finish on the siding. And then you could come in. If he can find it, you can come in a day or, yeah. day or two and, and just sign, sign it. that. And then and, we'll get the permit just, out as quickly as we possibly can. And he can order it, right? You already have this okay. Mm -hmm. If he can find that flat finish siding, he can order it because it's not going to get here before we get you the zoning right. permit. Once right. you come in and sign okay. it. Okay. All right. So, um, well, chances are he probably won't answer me tonight. <laughs> it's uh, This will be with Audra on her desk. I will put it there with notes tonight before I leave. So she has it and she knows what's going on. Okay. Um, so that if you come in and say, yes, Mark found it, you can sign this and then she can move forward with issuing the permit. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's probably the best way to, to go about doing that. I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you very much for coming and right. good luck with your project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Moving forward for the next application for 106 East State Street. Owner Henry Hunt applicant. And Joe Kiernan. Demolition yes. of addition to original building and construction of a larger addition at the same location and reconstruction of exterior decks and exit stairs. Is someone here representing 106? I am, yes. Joe Kiernan, he's on okay. remotely. Go ahead and describe the project for us. All right, uh, thank you members of the committee. Uh, my name is Joe Kiernan. I'm representing the owner of 106, who is Henry Hunt and also my father-in-law. Um, I am going to share my screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are um, existing renderings of the uh, present situation. Um, so if you can see my mouse, can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, so this area back here that you can see is supported by steel posts is an addition on the uh, older house. Um, I'm not sure about the age of this addition, but at some point after its construction, uh, the previous owner who we bought the building from constructed this rather elaborate stairwell system and porch system, which enabled him to turn this attic into a one bedroom apartment. Um, this is the only way to maintain access that didn't go through another apartment. So this entire deck system was actually permitted, which um, I found a little surprising, um, but basically the construction of it has created a situation where these posts that are supporting the addition are not sufficient. They're not a real foundation. Um, they're basically just concrete blocks on posts. And so that's one issue. And then it probably would have been fine on its own if it had not then been given this massive deck on top, which these posts literally just rest directly on the roof. Um, there's some like tar put around them to try and weatherproof them, but the entire weight of this thing is just too much for the foundation for the support. It's not a foundation. It's just these steel posts. Um, and there is some slight sagging that's starting to go on in the roof here. And most importantly, the roof has recently started leaking. I can't fix the roof without removing the entire deck. I can't remove the entire deck, you know, um, easily, first of all, and also maintain access to this apartment. So right now the apartment is actually uh, not occupied and will remain that way until we get this situation figured out. Um, and obviously for the tenant living in here, they have a leak. It's a small leak that doesn't leak very often, but it's not going to get any better. Um, so when confronted with our options, we basically decided that the best thing to do is just tear it all down, remove this entire addition, remove the entire deck system and rebuild it like new, you know, or uh, similar, but new. Um, so I'm just going to scroll back 
through here to the proposed rendering. Okay, so this is the proposed rendering, which there's very similar, but you can see some subtle difference. Firstly, this deck will be built for professionals. Um, secondly, the building is being expanded uh, about nine feet, I think, or might be 11 feet out. Um, it's a total width now from the house of 20 feet towards the rear. This is gonna let us uh, have a lot bigger bedroom up in here, a lot bigger uh, living space up in here. And then because of the nature of the steep slope behind the building, uh, I had to wolf engineers do a geotechnical analysis. Um, SW Cole did the actual geotechnical analysis. And we actually determined digging out a basement is not only not much more expensive than just putting in a, a regular foundation frost wall, but also it reduces the amount of weight that's up here on top of the hill because you're moving all the dirt that's inside the basement, which helps as far as the building potentially sliding off the hill, which has happened to other buildings in the area. Um, so that's why we went through the effort of having a full geotechnical analysis done and a foundation designed by an you know, engineer. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the project. Um, like I said, it, it pretty much has to be done um, in one form or another. The only other real option I have, I think, is to just tear it off the building and not rebuild it. But that would severely cut into the amount of income that we expected to get from this rental property. So um, as far as things that you guys are going to probably be concerned about, we're proposing all wood trim. So we haven't bought any of the materials yet, obviously, because with the prices of lumber fluctuating so greatly, we were basically told by RK Miles, we could either spend $62,000 and buy it all right now, or we could kind of roll the dice and see what everything costs when we actually need it. Um, so we decided to roll the dice on that. Uh, the only thing we have bought so far because they have like a 15 week lead time are the windows. So this side is the direct rear of the building. Um, this picture could be taken from like the top of one of the trees back there. It's all wooded back there. There's no houses. And these are going to be casement windows that we're proposing. They swing out like a barn door, uh, 90 degrees. They do count for egress um, in the event of fire. Uh, but I know that uh, the rest of the house has double hung windows. We are proposing one double hung window. I guess there isn't really a rendering of it, but it's on this side, which if you're facing the rear of the building is on the right side. So the, the I guess there's two double hungs here. The two windows that are gonna be facing the neighbor next door will be double hung windows. Um, but the ones that face just directly out back here are all casement windows. Um, siding, we're expecting to match the existing siding, some kind of uh, wood you know, plank siding. Um, and yeah, I guess that's uh, the, the whole project. Paint will be matched to the rest of the house. Um, so do you guys have any questions for me? Will you be adding a new living center, a, a living um, unit at the bottom there? Not a, not a unit, but the one bedroom, the existing one bedroom will become a two bedroom with a, base, a ba basement bedroom. I see. So that, that'll just be large in place. You know, there'll be some storage down there, um, and it'll be a pretty large bedroom, actually. Um, it just happened to be convenient as far as we had to dig a very large hole already for the frost wall. Um, also, for the because of the soil conditions there, the frost wall has to be very deep. It's not really for frost. It's more to get through the fill there into the native hill material. Um, and since we were already digging down that far, it, it was... a Percentage-wise, not a large increase to do a full foundation. And that let us just have such a large space down there. We decided to put a bedroom down there instead of cramming two of them up into the, um, the upstairs. Joe, were you able to tell when that full decking system was added to the house? There is a zoning permit for it. Meredith, I'm not sure if you remember. I don't have it with me. Um, but it um, was not too long ago, maybe 15 years ago, something like that. Yeah, I... So there was a whole series of issues. This was before my time. I've done some research on the permit history previously. I, I don't have it in front of me. Um, I think the decking system may have been something that was permitted after the fact. 
um, on a build, both a building permit and zoning permit situation. Um, uh, so it, it's, yeah, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of that. And that would have been well before my time here. I actually have been up there. <laughs> well, it will, of course, under this proposal, it will be a lot better and safer. Yeah, like a real railing, not fencing or a garden trellis material. <laughs> And we are having a structural design done to, to transfer the load from the top deck all the way down through the actual load bearing beams and things into the foundation. Whereas right now it just sits on top of the roof and it won't stay there forever. How many units are in this building now? There are four. There's uh, one in the front first floor, the whole second floor is a unit, the attic, and then this unit that we're talking about right now. What are the materials you intend to use for the deck? What is your hope? Um, yeah, we, like I said, we haven't actually bought the materials yet. So um, I didn't have anything uh, in particular that I was thinking of. Some kind of pressure treated lumber, I'm sure, for the posts. Um, I'm not sure yet if it would be a composite or a pressure treated lumber decking material, uh, but it would look like wood almost certainly. The stairs will all be that metal grate stairs. That's, well, it's kind of unclear if it's required, but it's recommended for exterior stairs because they don't require shoveling. So if someone isn't shoveling and then they have to exit the building down these stairs, it doesn't matter that they didn't shovel, they can still get out of the house. Um, they don't look the best, but that's what's required. Uh, so yeah, um, it will probably depend on price, whatever we end up with the you know, the deck and durability too. Um, the composite materials don't need to be repainted all the time and stuff like that. So since this is a rental unit, they'd probably go with the more durable material. Right now it's some kind of untreated lumber that's like rotting. How long do you expect the project to take? The contractor said six months, and we're supposed to start at the beginning of July. Anyone on the committee have any comments, questions, suggestions? I'm good. No, seems like an ambitious project. It certainly is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's going to cost almost as much as the house did, which we didn't expect <laughs> three years ago, but that's just the way things are now. Yep. There's another one I think is an improvement. Well, sure. Yeah, when, when you're dealing with leaks and, and materials that are starting to rot, you have to do something. And this seems like a very logical, ag aggressive, but logical uh, approach to solving a number of problems and creating some additional value. So that's... Yes, that was one of the reasons we bumped it up to two bedrooms is try and get some of this money back. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure that we ever will. Probably would have been cheaper to just tear it off the building. 
Depends on how long you live. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, well, really, my father-in-law, how long he lives. He says he plans on living till he's 95. So at that point, it might actually be a pretty good deal. <laughs> well, it, it's a good investment for the future, whatever that may be. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'll go at least as far as the town is concerned, yeah. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be good. Good. I'll go down through the criteria. For all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. This is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Height of building additions shall not overwhelm the primary facade and must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between height, width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. This addition is acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level, from adjacent public rights of way, and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. This addition is acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, Entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration of a building. Acceptable. And all in favor of the application is presented. Speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Yes. And Steve says yes, so that's five zero in favor. Uh, Joe, could you take off your screen share? I think. <laughs> How do I do that? Uh, uh, oh, I need to be in the Zoom window probably. I, I might it. be able to, I can also just stop it. There we go. Right, there we go. Uh, yeah, so. I see a button. <laughs> I sent you the comments we got from Department of Public Works about the erosion control plan. Yes. We or like the erosion control fence. requirement. Um, yeah, so yeah. we need to, um, Audra and I need to actually do the full site plan report document, which is kind of like a mini staff report mm -hmm. um, that you're used to seeing for the DRB. Um, but because there's no recommendations on this form from, for DRC, I don't need you to sign that. So it's basically just an auditors of my court to do that admin site plan incorporating um, Kurt's comments um, and, you know, that and that you need to follow the section 3008 general standards for erosion control. Um, so I just need, okay. to, we need to pull that together and then we should be able to issue this permit now that we have DRC's sign off. Great. Um, I know you can't know for certain, but do you have a maybe approximate date in mind? Uh, I'm hoping this week. Oh, great. Okay. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I'm hoping to get to it this week, um, juggling various things, um, but we, mm -hmm. I want to get to it as soon as possible. Um, cool. Do you want us to email you when that's all ready, just so that we don't have to rely on the mail to get it to you since you're here in town? You want to just pick it up? Sure. Yeah, I'll come pick it up. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much and good luck with your project. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from May the 2nd and the 16th? Yes. On May the 2nd, I make a motion that we accept them the way they are. Go here, second. second. All in favor of the main second minutes, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. Liz. Steve. Liz.
May 2nd is approved. How about May the 16th? I'll make the same motion to approve them the way they're written. They're fine. So here, second. All in favor of the May 16th minute, speak your names. Eric, Ben. Martha. That was not that one. Okay. So May 16th is approved. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I guess I'd like to say something. We're having a public hearing on June 14th for the, uh, uh, the first draft to the guidelines. So I think it'd be good if the designer or your members took a look at them. And you can send your comments to Meredith, right? Yep. So I sent everybody an email end of last week that has a link to the online version of the design guidelines. So you can go through that way. I think I included also a link to the city's webpage on it, which has a link to a downloadable PDF. Um, the PDF, you can't see all of the like photos and options, but you get to see all the text that's in the guidelines. Um, we would love your feedback. Um, if you can, you know, written comments, if that's what you can do, if you want to attend the presentation on the 14th, when we're trying to get all the, get as much public input as possible, that would be great too. Um, but the design review committee will be referencing these, I'm sure, once they're approved as policy by the city. Um, it's taking the place of the old cityscape workbooks. None of it should be surprising. Um, we, the Historic Preservation Commission really tried to have illustrations that reflect what's already been going on and that merges with the actual regulations um, to give good examples, but it would be great to have your input both on the content and how it works. We're doing it before it's actually complete for several reasons. One is to meet the timing required by the grant, but basically it's so people can feel they're really going to have meaningful input because we can, it's easy to change things. This is a draft. Okay. Anything else or, or do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Steve. Liz. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.